Yeah, hello guys. Um, how are you guys doing? Uh, I hope you're all fine. Today, um, we're going to be talking about generative AI and SAPS for HANA. And um, um, of course, we know that AI is um, one of the major emerging technologies right now in the world. And also as an SAP consultant, it's now very important that um, we all, sorry, we have to actually start upskilling in the area of AI and generative AI. So the essence of this course is to probably just explain what I understand or what you know I've come to from experience, from studies, have um, It'll give you some insights about what generative AI is, how it's actually helping to transform the way we work in SAP, uh, and also some of the you know tools, some of the I'll give you some a little a, a little bit uh, some background about you know how you can actually use this very important tools or knowledge to drive your projects. But we're not going to be going into details in this course. This is just um, an introduction into this very important concept right now all over the world. And um, as somebody who is um, also looking at um, growing your career and getting in line with trends, learning, having knowledge about AI, or at least um, you know some of the tools we have out there, and of course, if you follow trends, you would see that most of the major ERPs in the world are actually trying to leverage on the, you know, um, possibilities of AI leverage on the massive technology and development that AI is bringing. Yeah, and we're just going to see some of those examples. So um, why not um, relax and let's just learn about what this concept is all about and you know, um, you know, enjoy ourselves. Why not? You can please um, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, why not share this video? Um, the essence of doing this video is actually to educate people and um, you know get people to know about these things. Um, of course, no, uh, we we all don't have the economic means to do some of these specialized trainings, but <clears throat> why not? You can. From this video, get to know one or two things about what AI is, what generative AI is, what SAPS for HANA um, is, and you know how these two technologies are coming together to transform the way we do work in the ERP space. Um, so, like, subscribe, and share um, if you don't mind. Um, thank you very much. So, let's go deep into the course for today. Um, of course, AI is the major thing in this time. Everybody is trying to you know, get to understand what the concept is all about. Um, and at this time, at the point of making this video, if you go on LinkedIn, there are a lot of, you know, updates about on people's profile about, you know, AI, you know, learning generative AI in SAP, which is a very wonderful thing. So the essence of this course is, you know, probably to push out their more knowledge about the concept and help others also come on board. Now, let's dissect the world generative AI basically. Um, so we're just going to look at it at you know, try to gain deeper insight into what the term generative AI is, and um, hopefully we we'll take it up from there. Now, what is generative? Of course, these definitions are coming from the Oxford um, Dictionary. Uh, generative says or means relating to or capable of production or reproduction. That's the simple definition of what generative is. So if you look at the word, um, anything that is generative has, the, has or have the capacity to reproduce itself. The second is what is artificial. The second major word in, in you know in the world generative AI. We're just trying to dissect that word and try to really see or have a visual of what the meaning of generative AI is. So artificial um, there is which is AI. Um, a there means artificial, the I means intelligent. So artificial there means made or produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally, and especially 
um, as a copy of something natural, right? So it's one thing we should know about the AI today, first of all, is that it has the ability to reproduce itself when, when you talk about generative AI or the word generative. Secondly, it's, it's something that is made by humans, so it's not a general, it's not a natural occurrence. It's a um, human, the product of human, um, you know, development. <clears throat> then the third is intelligence. Yeah. So intelligence here is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Right. So of course, it all makes sense now what the word generative AI is. So you are looking at, um, hopefully. Algorithm, algorithms, models that have been created by humans that have the capacity to reproduce information. Uh, you know when they have, when you have actually trained them within a set of data over over a period of time, they can use that training and you know start deducing or start reproducing more information outside you know that scope of work. We're going to see that detail as we move on. Then we have also known that um, part of the, uh, the abilities generative AI machines or models have is the ability to acquire knowledge from the data set you have actually exposed them to. Yeah, so let's go deep and see, you know, what this whole concept is all about. Now, what is artificial intelligence? Of course, we the world is quite popular now, um, but we'll just look into it deeper and we're getting this definition from Wikipedia. Um, AI, as it's, it's fondly called, is a broad in a broad sense is intelligent exhibited by machines, particularly computer systems. So let's stop there. Intelligence exhibited by machines. So the question is, how does this happen? You know, how how does a machine get to learn some set of data or some sort of algorithms or you know, and how um, how where does the intelligence come from yeah when you say something is intelligence it means you know what you're trying to say has the ability to you know mix you know give you some insight or make very key decisions in a way that is um objective you know so how how you know we're going to look into that deeper how does a machine exhibit intelligence now it's a field of research in computer science that develops and studies methods and software which enables machines to perceive the environment and use learning and intelligence to take actions that maximize their chances of achieving defined goals. So these are very, very important touch points. Here is the first thing is that one thing you must take home um, from this uh, um, you know, brief talk is that artificial intelligence is an intelligence exhibited by machines, number one. Number two, it's a field, it's, um, it, it, it's coming from the field of computer science. And basically what this mesh, how do this machine exhibit intelligence? Like I said, it has to do with um, softwares and methods, you know, data algorithms, that, which enable these machines to understand the environment, um, um, you know, able to interact within the environment and use learning and intelligence to take action. So based on historical data, based on some information that has been fed to this um, software or to this machine, he's able to interpret those data and, you know, make key decisions. That's basically what this whole concept is. So this whole concept is that if you look at the world right now, I, I think we don't have an issue with data. We just have an issue of how do we make sense out of this? How do we make sense out of the information or the data we have? You know, so um, scientists, computer scientists, and of course developers have come together to, you know, develop machines that can pick this data we have all over around us. You can because they're everywhere when you purchase something, when you travel, when you, you know, you know, use the traffic lights, get into a bus, information is everywhere, right? So, I mean, the other day I was, I was on my phone and on my location and I mean, Google was able to show me all the places I've visited over a period of time. That was you know, very awesome. But 
this information have been there. I've been traveling, but of course, right now, when you know, with the use of AI, we're we're actually you know trying to put to good use the information that hitherto before now were not actually seen as relevant or were just packed somewhere. And um, <clears throat> now we're able to use these decisions to come up with solutions that have actually helped the society. For example, um, tracking your location in case something bad happens to you with the uh, with those kind of apps, you know, um, um, apps that track your location, you know, that can actually be useful to the, um, you know, police or authorities to locate you and all that. So these are some of the very good, um, you know, advantage that, you know, AI and, you know, technologies have actually brought, you know, in this time. And another thing is to maximize, these machines are able to maximize their chances of achieving defined goals. So most of the times you train these machines to behave, to study a particular set of data and, you know, <clears throat> make decisions out of, you know, those data out of the, you know, similarities or the the gaps within those data, and it's able to interpret them and come up with, um, you know, information or come up with an advice or come up with, you know, um, insight into what that data can mean. And of course, you know, sometimes these are in also improbabilities. Yeah, so that's basically what artificial intelligence is. We've been able to look at break down the word. And now we're actually seeing bringing artificial and intelligence together. And we're able to see that this has to do with the machines that humans have created and fed with information. These machines, which are sophisticated, are able to study this data. And <clears throat> from that study, they make, you know, they're able to uh, make good predictions, they're able to advise, they're able to support, you know, the um, business and the users to also make you know, good decisions. Now we have seen what AI is. The next thing is what is generative AI. So sometimes we have the confusion about, you know, is AI the same as generative AI? Well, we're going to see that much later, but we have seen what AI is. Now let's see what generative AI is. Um, <clears throat> so basically generative AI includes a collection of techniques and algorithms designed to understand and find the underlying patterns and structures present in the data set, enabling the AI model to generate new samples that resemble the training data. So what this is saying is, uh, um, if you look at the definition of AI, you can see that here AI is trained um, to achieve defined goals you know, based on the data set that's available to the algorithm. In generative, which is the difference between AI and generative AI, um, the machine or the model is able to uh, understand patterns, which also the um, AI can do, and structures present in the data set. But the difference basically is that while the, the what I will call traditional AI is able to you know, on, um, understand patterns and structures within a data set, but it's trained to do a particular thing. So it can be trained for, um, for you know, like I gave an example to track, track your location. Once it does that, it doesn't do any other thing because that's what it's been trained to do. However, if you look at the generative AI, it's a step further, right? So it's able to, from the data set you have exposed it to, it's able to generate new samples that resemble what you have, you know, been able to expose the system to. So I think that's the step, that's the major difference between the traditional AI and the generative AI. You know, the traditional is a step further where the machine starts thinking for itself. So it's able to understand and um, generate new information which you did not actually provide for it, but because of its exposure to that data, it's able to generate new data. Just to you know, explain it a little bit, a little bit easier. It's just like um, a lecturer, right, and a student. Um, so, a lecturer can teach a student how to, um, let's say, um, how to make a chair. 
yeah, basics of making a chair, you know, yeah. the, the wood, the way you put the wood, the, the how you, you know, carve the wood and how you, you know, put the joints together and everything about the chair. Then the student can take it further, you know, um, and, you know, add some more features into that chair that, uh, you know, the lecturer did not actually, um, you know, provide. So the, so you can see that the, what makes us human is the ability to take the information that was given to us and be more innovative and creative about it. So that's exactly what the generative AI models are actually doing. Um, picking from the you know data you have data set you're exposed to it, it studies it studies it and tries to um, you know generate new samples or generate new information. Um, from that data set. That's basically the difference between your or the traditional AI and the generative AI. Oh. Sorry, guys. OK, so um, key difference or uh, differences or difference between AI and generative AI, like I've said, the traditional AI, which is also referred to as a narrow AI, focuses on performing a narrow task and can operate under a limited predefined set of constraints or set of data, right? So it's it's um, created to handle a particular task. Why a generative AI allows computers to produce brown new outputs um, that are often in this uh, in this uh, indistinguishable from human generated contents. Um, so generative AI is capable of handling massive amount of data to deliver insights at a much larger scale or scales. So that's the major difference between the traditional AI and the generative AI. That's why right now you can hear courses in generative AI and AI. So now you know that the basic difference between these two is just the, the fact that the traditional is meant, you know, is trained to handle a, a specific tax it's, and it's focused on that tax. While the generative AI is able to regenerate or recreate, um, you know, reproduce outputs that were hinted to not give it, to not give in to it. So it's it's like a step further. It thinks, it um, predicts, it's it's able to. Um, understand and regenerate and you know produce output that were hit at or not uh, just for example if you train if you give ai for example um pictures about cats natural pictures about cats different kinds of cats the generative ai is able to pick those pictures and recreate new pictures of cats that weren't even there so you can give ai for example the picture of a black cat um, the generative AI can pick that picture, recreate a cat that is white, but resembles what you had given to it. So that's the, the you know, that extra touch is what actually makes generative AI what it is. You know, I hope um, I'm trying to, um, you know, explain as simple as I can. Now let's look at uh, let's summarize the approach of generative AI. Basically, all the fundamentals of what we of what is what generative AI is made up of. So first of all, it's made up of AI. <laughs> like as you know, um, we have talked about what AI is. You know, it's, it's intelligence exhibited by machines. Um, the second, or the, I will call this the pillars of generative AI. The second is machine learning. Like we said, that this machine is able to, you know, learn from the set of data and is able to reproduce new outputs. So you, for that machine to learn, you have to now introduce the concept of machine learning. So machine learning basically talks about um, computers learn from samples and the data without being, you know, explicitly programmed. Numerical and statistical approach to train a model, including many kinds of algorithms, supervised learning, um, including self um, self supervised learning and unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. These are different learning patterns that um, a, a machine can you know, go through. Then we have deep learning, which is a subfield of machine learning that specialized, that is that um, uses specialized computational techniques, um, you know, to um, um, 
namely various multi-layer AI neural networks architecture. So the idea is to deep learning is basically talks about um, you know gaining more insight into the data set. You know it stretches the the machine to really dig deeper, and you know it's like. It's like um, when you're discovering crude, you have to really go drill down into the earth to really get the 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 the, the source. Now, so deep learning gives the machine the ability to drill down into the data and you know make the best use of the information that is within that data set. And of course, there are different um, um, architectures: RNNs, CNNs, transformers and the rest of them. We won't go into those details. We'll hopefully look for the second part of this course and when we're done. Now, how does generative AI work, basically? Um, generative AI uses uh, probabilistic models and um, deep learning structures to understand and absorb intricate patterns within the data, and then building the system to create outputs that monitor these patterns. So basically, at a very... Um, Simple explanation. Um, of course, use of probability is uh, is, is part of um, you know statistics and model and, and part of um, the, the approach of you know modeling. So what generative AI basically uses is a probabilistic model, and of course, for it to gain deeper insight and make key decisions, it has to also involve deep learning structures to understand and absorb. So you can see the two words are very, very um, strong words and they're very deep in their roots. So first of all, these models are supposed to understand the set of data. And outside of the understanding, for it to be able to generate new ideas or new output, it needs to ab absorb that into its um, stream. When, that, when those two processes are, are completed, what you will see is um, the enablement of the system to create outputs that mirror, you know, these patterns. Like I gave you an example of a natural cat and a cat that is generated by AI. For example, if you go to Facebook right now, there are, of course, image um, um, models that, you know, changes people's face. So what you can do is you can, you know, use that app or use that link um, on Facebook and automatically your pictures is transformed to probably a warrior or something. So that's a, that's a very good example of what generative AI can do. So it has looked at the pattern, looked at your face, mapped all the structures within your body, you know, when you, I mean in your picture, and is able to um, learn about your image and regenerate an image that is totally not you. You know, so that's the concept of you know generative AI. Now, um, so let's see. Okay, so rather than you know simply identifying or categorizing known patterns like the AI, the traditional AI we used to know, generative AI goes beyond to produce unique and innovative materials. Like I've said, it's just a step. I guess would we'll keep improving on you know what you know on how far generative AI can go. But it's a very good step, you know, and it's it's something that it's um, the future of AI is huge, and um, I think it's it's wise for us to keep learning and improving our knowledge in AI. Um, so let's look at use cases for generative AI. Uh, there are a lot of use cases, and a lot of um, um, companies right now that are actually implementing AI. We see them in a, you know when we when we well, so let's just go through then I'll explain some of the use cases you know real business examples. Um, so you have generative AI models in computer vision that can be used for creating realistic images or filling in missing parts of an image, right? So that's one of the use cases of AI where the system actually um, regenerates images or fill in the gaps, you know, and uh, that's that's a, a very good example of the use case. For natural language um, processing, generative AI models can generate a coherent text and engage in conversations resembling human language. Of course, we have the chat box, we have the chat GBTs, 
and other la la large language models that we, you know, that basically is helping us to write, to correct, to regenerate, to transform language and transform words. You know, so you can probably tell a language model like ChatGPT to write a letter for you. You know, to, you know, to your to your employer, telling him that you're sorry about a particular thing. So AI goes into the data set and pick, you know, regenerate a word, regenerate that letter from scratch. So that's basically an example of a use case um, for generative AI. Then the third is generative AI is important in tax like data augmentation, anomaly detection, simulating complex systems. Of course, these are very, very important use cases, especially for you know detection of fraud and you know detection of um, you know site login details, uh, you know detection of usernames, user accesses, CM security you know, and all that. So it's also a very important use case of generative AI. For business, we can we can basically see them all, all around us. Um, so let's say, for example, Netflix, for example, which is um, <clears throat> um, a subscribed um, you know, channel where you can watch movies. Um, of course, you can see that um, the company uses AI to effectively uh, what we do, what we call personalization of content where it you know it um, analyzes your if you if you select a particular kind of movies let's say action movies you realize that next place would um, analyze your viewing habits and you know and try to give you more of action movies because that's been your selection over time so that's basically the system learning from your history of selecting action movies to recommend you know, good action movies that fits your habits or your ratings. Another example we can we can find in use cases as um, for um, you know computer vision would be Uber, so Uber or any other um, um, you know um, app that has to do with uh, within the transportation industry. Um, for example, Uber probably uses AI you know for its dynamic pricing model. Um, of course, you can see when you use Uber, it, it the model is very, very um, deep, where it looks at everything around that trip, looks at the the traffic, looks at the weather, looks at the timing, looks at the number of people that the car would carry. It looks at all this and com comes up with the price. And that's also an, a very important use case of you know AI. Um, then the third would be, uh, let's say, using of AI by audit companies to detect fraud, you know, to analyze the um, data, if financial information, analyze financial reports, you know, and all that. So these are typical everyday use case of AI that we can also relate to. Let's also see. There are still some other um, use cases we can find: predictive analytics, data transformation, intelligent process automation, you know, um, automated summarization, anomaly detection, like I've said, <clears throat> financial reporting and forecasting, predictive maintenance algorithm. So these are very important use cases. If you look at predictive analytics, for example, can predict future outcomes and help users make better decisions proactively. That's a very important use case and of, of um, AI. Um, and of course, we see that a lot in you know, decision making around the world. We have data transformation and integration. Use AI to help teams with large data sets and um, optimize schedules more effectively. It makes sense out of large resources. And you know, I can't go through all of them, but the idea is that these are typical use cases we can see how it, um, we can observe around us how AI is actually transforming businesses and transforming the way we work. Yeah, so coming into SAP and how SAP has actually is also is, is actually transforming itself, trying to imbibe or trying to um, um, introduce AI into its ERP system. 
Um, there's a product right now we call Jules. I'm not advertising for SAP, but I'm trying to see how the system um, has been able to integrate AI into its application um, since uh, and how that is actually how that has transformed the business, transformed the landscape, transformed the way we work, how we configure, how we train users, how we support the business. So one of the products we have at this time is called Jules. Um, it's an innovative AI assistant that transformed the way we engage with the SAP in you know, our business system, ensuring that you know every interaction is valuable, every tax is streamlined, and I, I, it's a very an interesting and wonderful tool. And um, I would say kudos to SAP for you know championing the one of the major ERPs of the world that is championing the, that's transforming the way you know we work as consultants. Um, with the introduction of AI into its product. Now, some of the features you would find um, for the SAP Jules, which is you know one of SAP's AI uh, um, services, is that it's faster to work and it has you know improved on you know time value for money. Um, we have what we call the AI standard, you know. You can ask questions, you can interact with, it gives you the support you want. There are now smarter insights with the introduction of the um, AI assistance um, um, solution called Jules. There are better outcomes based because of greater insights, you could suppose, expect better outcomes. And um, there is also full control over decision making and data privacy issues. Um, so basically, for faster work, we can see that using artificial intelligence, the assistance can help automate retributive tasks, provide insights and recommendations, and facilitate seamless collaborations across different SAP applications. You know, so that's what AI has been able to, the AI assistance has been able to help, you know, the, the, the business and the consultant in automating some of the repetitive repetitive processes we have, and that would actually, you know, has given the, both the business the time, free up a lot of time to look at insights, you know, and you know, facilitate more collaboration. Um, AI assistance also helps to en enhance profitability and efficiency by reducing manual efforts, which is one of the key important features of AI. And of course, by leveraging the power of AI technology, you can streamline your task, improve your productivity, and optimize performance you know, across the SAP um, applications. So that's very key. Um, streamline task, improve productivity, and optimize performance. For smarter insights, we can say that SAP Jules can you know, get quick answers and smart insights on demand by utilizing AI and machine learning algorithms to analyze in real time and you know, provide instant feedback. That is key and that is if, um, one of the very smart features or one of the very interesting features of the SAP Jules, which is the AI assistant, the ability to have that conversation and get that the feedback um, as quick as possible has actually transformed the way we consultants work. So it's easy to support your key users, it's easy to support the business in helping them make the best of decisions. Um, so we have some other content that you know SAP Joe's provides, like you know, utilizing the personal content resource. SAP for me is one of those very interesting platforms. Um, engage an SAP community, which is a very great way to start to succeed within the SAP space because you have to engage with experts, engage with other people um, within the community and get the support you need. And of course, the very, very, very interactive and informative SAP Learning Hub that is a wealth of knowledge. Um, and that has actually, that it's, I mean, it's, um, SAP for me, which is part of the, uh, which of course the sub, which is uh, the learning hub is just, is a sub of, it's a wonderful platform where you can get everything you want, you know, from support to learning to, you know, SAP notes, KBAs and the rest of them. So wonderful platform 
um, to learn and to keep improving um, oneself. For making decisions, you know, you know, and you know, data privacy, we have stricter controls, encrypting data, regular audit and monitoring, clear data privacy policies, provide user trainings. These are some very important insights that um, SAP Jules has actually um, brought into, you know, um, the solution brought into the work or you know has helped to improve on the application so you can see that these are very important you know key points to you know have control over your business and have control over your data now for us to summarize and wrap up um, thank you guys for listening so far so the future of sap in ai uh, um, basically is that as companies you know continue to invest in developing and in developing and interacting you know the the ai cap, um, capabilities into its product and service ai is expected to play a key role in enabling automation enhancing decision making and proving uh, and you know, improving user experiences within the sap ecosystem you know right so of course, as AI technology advances, SAP is likely to continue to leverage to unlock new opportunities for innovation and growth for both the company and its customers. And of course, for we consultants, it's also very important that you are, um, you know, up to date with the trends, up to date with the um, new technologies. You know, making sure that you are learning, you know, making sure you're following these trends, making sure you're engaging with SAP and of course other ERPs and upskilling. It's very, very important so that as SAP is, as SAP is leveraging and is creating new solutions, we are also ready to work with SAP and to support the users and of course, and support the business um, and, um, you know, get the better for it. So we have come to the end. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. Um, thank you for your time. My name is Kelechi Kelly Adjede. I'm also um, a consultant with SAP. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video. It's important that we all get to know what SAP, what how AI is actually, um, you know, improving um, the SAP system. How AI is transforming the way we work and i guess it should be you know the, the the better for all of us so why not if you have any questions any concerns you can drop your comments or you can do me an email or you can you know send me an e you can you know chat me up on my you know, youtube channel um, um i thank you very much for listening and do have a lovely day